So this is a, a picture that a customer sent. Um, you know, I didn't ask him to send the picture. The picture's phenomenal. You know, you, you get the rooting effect. Now, by the way, I heard from a lot of people at the Van Trump conference that, yeah, there, there are different products that can give a good rooting effect, but then we see all this top growth and no, no more yield. That's why I emphasize you won't necessarily see a big boost in the vegetative or above ground growth. That's not what we're doing. It's, it's partly why the product is so popular in the turf industry, because what they don't want is a product that makes them have to mow more often. And we don't cause the surge growth, but we do keep the color and the playability and in agriculture, the yield, that's what we're going for. We're not going for big vegetative growth. So this, this was corn. It was treated one time at planting, half a gallon an acre in furrow mixed with starter fertilizer. You know, through all the years of data that we've got, university and grower data, including this last summer, I've seen yield increases. Well, you know, really, yeah, there have been a couple of times that, that we don't have any gain. You know, we, we didn't win. But typically, it's in the three to as high as 22 bushel an acre range. Uh, typical result, though, is going to be more six to 11 bushels. Um, it's variable. But what we don't see is a downside. Uh, we usually see it, a, a yield increase. And again, I go for at least a 2x return on the investment. A lot of times, we do a lot better. Soybeans, similar kind of deal. But this time, he, it wasn't applied in furrow. It was applied um, as a, a foliar spray seven days after planting, uh, just again, half a gallon an acre. And look at the difference in the roots, the tap root in particular. See the root nodules on the organics treated versus the control. Uh, the grower said that he had trouble because he didn't have a shovel. He had trouble pulling up the check plant because the roots kept breaking, but not the Holganics plant, the Holganics treated. Again, typical yield increase in beans is gonna be two to six bushels an acre. So look, I'm not gonna, like some people say, oh, 40, 50% increase. Yeah, right. Um, this, this is pretty reproducible, and that's a nice return on investment, and it's helping the soil. This is another picture that came in just a couple weeks ago. Um, this is winter wheat. And again, half a gallon an acre, uh, sprayed foliar five days after planting. I, you know, the difference in the root thickness and root mass says it all. So here's some of the data. This is in North Central Illinois. So this I like to call some of the best corn ground God created. Uh, this is the same field two years in a row. This is replicated plot data. So yes, there's a lot of noise if I were to give you all the raw data. So these are averages, but these are averages from the researcher. So the, this is this is what, what he represented. Again, high variability, 2016, phenomenal yield, 247 bushels. This is dry land. This is not irrigated. He wrote, was rotating off of beans in, in, seven, in 16. It was a good year. In 17, we got a similar yield increase. Overall yields weren't as high. It was a different year. Now we go to soils that aren't quite as good. This is Western Missouri. Uh, this is, again, the same research farm, replicated plots, but they're long rows, four rows wide. In 2017, um, some of the highest yield increases I've seen with organics on corn, you know, over 21 bushels. 2018 was a really dry year, especially where this farm was. And again, it's not irrigated. The farm manager said, and he does a lot of research with a lot of products, that this was the best looking corn plot on the farm. And we still got over 10 bushels. And I can tell you, if I did a scatter plot, that average is dragged down by one rep that was really, really low. And as tempting as it is to throw it out, because then we're plus 15 bushels, I, I can't do that. So I'll just tell you, you know, it's not a widget. It's not going to give the exact same thing every time, but what an agriculture does. Um, but these are pretty good results. Soybean, same place in Western Missouri, same farm manager. Uh, you can see again, just over three bushels an acre, two years in a row, even in 18, which was a really, really dry year. Now I know there were some, some vegetable farmers on and I've got 
more data uh, that I that I can share that I've I've got here. We have great results in potato, and I've done studies at two different univers well three different universities and commercial growers um, in Idaho. Uh, we've got some studies in Washington and in North Dakota and in Pennsylvania. What we tend to see is higher payable yield, so you get more potatoes in the size range that you get paid, you know, the seven, eight dollars, a hundred weight or whatever it is that, you know, that you're growing and not the 50 cent, a hundred weight payout for calls. Uh, we also see higher weight per acre. Our results on potato are, are fantastic. Um, I didn't include the strawberry data, but I'll tell you berries absolutely love the stuff. My trials in, in California and I have a, a, a customer base in uh, Northeast Indiana, uh, the berries do extremely well. Also in Alabama, where we had a really good year on strawberries. Uh, we've got data on cucumbers, you know, you have cucurbits. So whether it's cucumber, melon, watermelon, uh, pumpkin, and tomatoes, uh, lots of data here. Uh, the programs are a little different, but again, years of, of, of work here. You know, I think if you were at the Van Trump conference, you, you probably heard Barrett mention that we've got some nematode control. So first of all, we are not an EPA registered nematicide. So this is not something you will find on the label. Uh, that takes a lot of work and money and you know, we're exploring doing that. But we actually had uh, some golf people down in Florida where nematodes are a big problem. Tell us a year after using our product, their nematode counts dropped like a rock. And so I got excited. So I went to a nematode expert at University of Illinois, and we've done three years of studies now. He has found broad spectrum activity. Uh, so this is a soybean cyst nematode, but also corn lesion, tomato root knot, lance sting, uh, multiple modes of action. Uh, in field trials that we've done uh, with the university, we see again, higher yield, it's high soybean cyst nematode ground, and he inoculates every plant with 2,000 eggs. So we're hitting them with a hammer, and we're seeing an 75 to 80% reduction. The picture there on, on the right, that is an actual nematode that was killed by one of the microbes in the Bio 800 mix, and we know which one it is. Um, and it, there's more than one that has this activity. And um, so it's just there. It, it, we're gonna continue to pursue it, but. Uh, you know, like Barrett says, this is like the prize in the Cracker Jack box. It just, it comes with the product. So I threw a lot at you. Um, go for biological diversity. Our, we have a lot of data that shows that we increase root mass, uh, we increase yield. Uh, we're going to help build the soil. You know, I tell people, even if, if you, you don't see you know, a, a 2x return on investment on yield, you know, the worst thing that happens is we're making your soil a little better. For most people, they're going to get a, a nice yield boost. Uh, 